Today, we'll go over key steps on how to make and achieve your big family financial goals for next year. Welcome to Simplify and Enjoy, the podcast and community focused on helping families have less stress and more options through minimalism and financial independence. I'm your host, El Martinez. This podcast is sponsored by Coastal Credit Union. Coastal's mission is to help you live a better life by offering you a better way to bank. Find out how at bankbetter.org. As 2021 winds down, now is a great time to start setting up some pieces with your finances so that you can knock things out of the ballpark in 2022. While I'm not a fan of New Year's resolutions for their own sake, I do understand why people like to make them. This is a way for them to reflect on what's been going on as we did last week when we talked about year-end reviews and to see what progress has been made and identify areas where we might want to adjust. Thankfully, on the financial side of things, this is very easy to set up because there are fantastic options out there, whether you go with a money app or a program to pull the numbers from your accounts into one neat dashboard. Last week, we went through that process of how to set up your review But year-end review is just that, looking back. If you want to level up for next year, we have to have some kind of blueprint or plan. Here's where it's key for us to create our family and financial goals in a smarter way. They give us a guide on how to allocate or prioritize our time and money for the next year. Today, I want to walk you through some critical parts of that process so that you can craft a game plan for next year and beyond. In this episode, we're going to look at how you can tackle some major hurdles most families have with creating their goals. We'll discuss creating better goals by taking the three most popular ones people make with their finances and turn them into SMART goals. We'll then look at how you can develop key habits to make it easier to hit your goals. Finally, we need to find time to adopt these new habits and systems. Are you ready? Let's get started. In part one of this series, we mentioned one of the ways we sabotage ourselves with money goals is how we make them. I've been doing this for over a decade writing about marriage, family, and finances. And I keep seeing the same goals being made year after year. Can you guess what they are? Okay. The top financial goals people make for the year are save more, pay down debt, and spend less. And for a bonus fact, earn more is usually on the list as well. It makes sense, right? Depending on where you are in your financial journey, you're going to have one of those three things be your focus. As you can see, though, those particular goals fail in a few ways. They're really vague, which leads to some problems as you're working through them. For example, how would you know you have accomplished it? What's the finish line for that goal? How are you going to save or pay down? How is this going to affect your budget? How aggressive? Or how slow are you going to be going on that goal? Instead of using these as your goals, you want to make SMART goals. As a quick review, SMART is an acronym that helps you frame your goals more effectively. A SMART goal is specific, measurable, attainable, results-focused, and time-based. What do I mean by that? When we're talking about specific, You don't want to save more. You want to set up your emergency fund or your travel fund. Measurable means that you have a number attached to the goal. You want to have $5,000 in your savings account or you need three months of essential expenses. Your goal is attainable. This isn't a moonshot, but it's something that you can actually accomplish provided you put the work in. And results-based, What's the result of you hitting your goal? What personal or family win will you have once you achieve it? 
And then time base is when do you want to accomplish this goal? This is handy because you can then work backwards and set up how much you need to set aside for savings or to pay off debt each month. The point of it is that you have a mini game plan already baked into this goal that sets you up on how you're going to accomplish and achieve it. Another benefit of laying out SMART goals is that you get a sense of whether or not you're working on too many things right now. Very quickly, you'll notice that the numbers aren't working out. You can then decide to either push back a deadline for a goal or two. Let's go back to those three financial goals that people make at the beginning of the year and turn them into SMART ones. Instead of saying, we're going to save more, we're going to change that into, we want to have $7,000 set aside in our emergency fund by October 1st. Instead of, we're going to pay down debt, we want to eliminate our store credit card debt of $2,700 by May 31st. And then instead of saying, we're going to spend less, you could frame it as, we want to cut back our monthly eating out expenses from 300 to 100 by July 31st. Just shifting how you frame your goals can have a huge impact on whether or not you're going to hit them. Set aside some time the next couple of weeks to go ahead and sit down, discuss the goals you would like to accomplish, and turn them into smart ones. Having goals is fantastic. And one of the best ways you can achieve your goals is by making sure that your habits are shifted in that direction. I admit that's easier said than done, but it is possible. Before we can talk about shifting habits, let's just take a quick step back and define what a habit is. In essence, a habit is something that you do almost automatically. And if you had to break it down, there are three key components to it. The cue, the routine, and the reward. Whether we see ourselves this way or not, the truth is many of us are already habit-forming machines. Don't believe me? Look at your day. You may find that many of the routines that you do on a daily basis or a weekly basis are habits. In fact, a study was done at Duke University and researchers there found that over 40% of the activities we do on a daily basis is a habit. It is possible to change and adjust your habits based on your goals and your circumstances. The key is working on those three components of a habit, the cue, routine, and the reward. So with the cue, that's your trigger for the behavior. For many of us, time is that trigger. Your alarm goes off, you get up, and you get started on your routine. Location can also be a trigger as you are logging into the office, whether that's at home or you had to commute for it. You may have a routine already set up. You log in and you check your email. The next part is the routine, which is the actual habit that you're doing. In this case, like we mentioned, getting up, getting dressed for work or checking your email. Finally, there's the reward, which is your payoff for accomplishing that habit. To effectively change those habits, you have to change those components in it. In his book, The Power of Habit, New York Times reporter Charles Duhigg gave an example of the afternoon snack at work. Instead of going for the processed foods or whatever is in the vending machine, you swap out that snack for something else. Could be apple and peanut butter, some other fresh fruits, whatever you prefer. Here, you're subtly shifting that habit because the cue is still the same. It's the afternoon, you want to get up, you want to socialize and have a snack. The habit is different because now you're choosing something different, something better for your health. But then the reward is also the same. You still get to catch up with your colleagues. And so that habit shift feels subtle, but it can make a huge difference over time. So that's a high-level view of how you can shift and change your habits. Now, a challenge that a lot of people have is that we want to fix it all, right? Maybe we have several goals that we want to achieve, not just with finances, but with our health around the house. This overwhelm and lack of making progress can make you quit. 
One of the best ways you can avoid burnout is by choosing and focusing on one, maybe two habits at a time. Once you get those habits into place, then you can move on to the next one. So which one or two goals should you focus on? With your goal, what are the one or two habits that can have a significant impact on that? This ties back into why we do those reviews. With our finances, we can see, is there a pattern? Is there an area that we need a little bit of extra effort on to make that progress? Is it us eating out too much? Is it a matter of us needing to bring up our income? Or could we optimize our expenses so we can knock out a certain debt? These discussions we have doing our reviews give us a better and clearer picture of which habits would have a significant impact. As you're reviewing your goals, see if you can break down a little bit further what tasks or habits you need to have to make it easier to be successful with this goal. Laying these pieces in place helps you build a system to push through some of the difficulties that will probably come up during the year and make it more likely that you'll reach your goals. It would be wonderful if we could have all the time in the world to work on our goals. The reality is we have to find and in many cases create time to do the work and make progress. As a work from home parent with two kids doing remote learning this year, it's practically a necessity to have some rhythm or system in place so that I can get stuff done. Here are the critical pieces in my system that have been a huge help for me, not only getting things done, but also having that balance so that I can relax. I'm someone who needs a visual representation of my schedule. While I do have some reminders set up for a few things on my phone, I've found that having a paper copy works best for me. Specifically, I like to use a hybrid of the bullet journal and a little bit of time blocking. I'll include links to the resources if you want to do a deep dive. But for me, the big benefit is how it helps me focus during the day and allows me to take my goals and to make it into bite-sized chunks. So I break it down by the month, by the week, and by the day. The next step is defining those important tasks. Like we mentioned with habits, some of them are more impactful than others. Not everything that comes up in your day is going to move the needle in the right direction with your family and financial goals. Speaking from experience, I know it's very easy to get bogged down with urgent tasks that pop up, but don't really add any value. It's crucial to set aside time and plan things out so that you're taking care of the most important task. Because I'm a morning person, I try to work those early in my day. You might be more of a night owl. That's my husband for sure. And so your task may be at night when things are quiet and you're able to focus. The important thing is that you set aside specific time for those important tasks. One method I found helpful with planning out my schedule is the gap method. It's something I picked up from Matt Raglan. He works with entrepreneurs with their productivity. GAP stands for goals, action, and protects. And how it works is, well, here's how Matt explains it. The first thing to do is to preview your week. I use the acronym GAP to plan my week. And that is specifying what are my goals for this week, the action steps that support those goals, and then when do I need to protect time, block time, in order to make sure that I have the time to take action on those tasks so that by doing all those action steps, I can achieve my goal. I love this because you're taking your goal and you're breaking it down into pieces. Let's take a step back from financial goals, for example. And let's say that you're looking at your health and you want to get back to a healthier weight for you. You've identified some tasks that can make a big difference, including an area you know you need to improve on, which is prepping your meals. So then you set aside mornings or the evening before to prepare for your lunch ahead of time. It's already been blocked out. 
And that doesn't mean it has to be a chore. You can make it more enjoyable by playing your favorite podcasts or songs in the background while you assemble your meals. The GAP method is a doable way to make progress on your goals and make sure you're fitting in those important tasks. Finally, I've discovered that when I set up my environment or my space, things go so much more smoother. For example, with working out, having my clothes set up, the equipment ready to go. With writing, either my journal, a notebook, or my laptop with the program is already on. And then for money dates, reviewing the numbers is a part of it, so have those numbers pulled ahead of time. There's this quote that's attributed to Bruce Lee. I'm not sure if it's true. I'll I'll double check that. But I think it captures what I hope you get out of this episode. It's absorb what is useful, discard what is useless, and add what is specifically your own. I want you to try the tips that make the most sense for you and incorporate it into your own system. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about hitting those goals, but also having time to learn, grow, and do the things you enjoy. This segment is brought to you by Coastal Credit Union. If you want to live better, you got to bank better. Find out how at bankbetter.org. Before we wrap up, I want to focus on a few key takeaways I got from preparing this episode. The first is define and focus on one, maybe two meaningful key goals. This is a case where quality beats quantity. Many of us, myself included, have done those. I'm going to try to accomplish so many things in such a short amount of time that we get burnt out and discouraged. Instead, do that year in review and see what are some areas that I definitely need to improve on and what are some goals that will make a huge impact on that. Then you can give your attention to those. As you accomplish those goals, you can then move on to the next one, which leads into the second takeaway. Build habits and systems that easily move you closer to your goals. Resistance is real. Willpower will fail at some point. So you can make your life less stressful by setting up your habits, mind system, and environment for success. And then finally, align your schedule toward your priorities. We all get pulled in different directions. That's why it's so important for you to have a clear idea of how you're spending your time so that you can make sure that it is directed on those most important tasks. And I know we just scratched the surface. You may have some more questions about this topic and want some help with figuring out your goals. So please join us in our free and private Facebook group, Thriving Families. We love to help one another out with our family and financial goals. Just head over to simplifyandenjoy.com slash FB. We'd love to see you there. I hope you enjoyed this episode and use these tips to review, reflect on this year, and set up some fantastic goals for the next year and beyond. As always, I'll include links to the resources we mentioned in this episode, plus more over at simplifyandenjoy.com. So we're wrapping up this season, and while I will be winding down on the site, I'm still going to be around. If you have any questions, I'll be over at Thriving Families on Facebook, usually in the afternoons, just reviewing things. Or if you want to join the community and ask a question, you can just go to simplifyandenjoy.com slash join. I'll still have weekly updates. I'd love chatting with you, getting your ideas for future episodes, and giving you sneak previews of what's coming up. Speaking of which, I've been doing some interviews for next season, and I'm really thrilled about who we're going to be having on and the topics we're going to be covering. Yes, we're still going to be talking about family and financial goals, but we're also going to be talking about improving our health, taking care of home projects around the house, and just enjoying life and things hopefully looking a little bit safer traveling more. So if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. We're on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you like to listen to your shows. Our theme was by Staircases with additional music by various artists. 
from audio. Finally, and most importantly, thank you so much for your support. If you have a question or topic you want covered on the podcast, please let me know. I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care.